Today we are turning one of Disney's most terrifying villains, the Horned King from the Black Cauldron, into an absolutely ruthless boss fight for your D&D campaign. And hey, if the idea of playing your favorite movies, video games, or anime as D&D adventures sounds fun to you, consider getting a critical hit on the like button and subscribing if you're not already. But with that being said, let's go ahead and dive right into today's adventure. Your adventure begins with you and your party being hired or actively already in pursuit of a bunch of raiders that have been plaguing the countryside. Unfortunately, however, as you go village to village trying to question people regarding the whereabouts of these raiders, you are instead met with some very grotesque scenes. As these raiders appear to have left no survivors, poison crops, dead farm animals, and piles of bodies in every village is all that you're able to find. However, your efforts are not in vain. As you go from village to village, you are at least able to uncover some key points that could help you find the location of the raiders. One piece of information is as you investigate the pile of bodies of all of the villagers that the raiders presumably left behind, you notice that there are only women and children. And it appears that there are no men's bodies in the entirety of the pile, nor can you find any scattered around the village. Additionally, despite the fact that this is all being done by raiders, it appears that the village as a whole has not been looted very thoroughly. Instead, the only thing that you actually find missing from the village is all of its weapons, tools, and all of its metal ore. Thinking heavily on this information, you and your party, nevertheless, continue your investigation and pursuit of the raiders. After a couple of grueling battles, you're eventually able to catch up, fight, and capture a couple of these raiders for interrogation. And as you interrogate these raiders, you're surprised to find that they are not raiding and looting these villages of their own volition. Instead, they're being hired as mercenaries to attack all of these locations, and more importantly, to steal the bodies of all of the men. With the information provided by the mercenaries, you are eventually able to get to their main encampment, and through either fighting or or some clever persuasion, you are able to get information from the captain regarding who hired them and more importantly where they are located, in a long abandoned fortress in the middle of the continent known as Spiral Castle, aptly named due to its spiral architecture and confusing layout that often resembles more of a maze than a true castle. With this information, now you and your party are that much closer to finally ending this plague on the countryside as you and your party look for a way to infiltrate the fortress. Once inside, the entirety of Spiral Castle acts like a maze-like dungeon, with you and your party making your way through strange rooms and weird keeps hoping to find the throne room where you can finally kill the person that hired the mercenaries. Along the way, you and your party will fight goblins, trolls, mercenaries, as well as a couple of undead. And when I say a couple, what I mean to say is a lot of undead. In stark contrast to the combat abilities of the goblins or the mercenaries, these undead soldiers don't appear to be able to really put up a fight. And in fact, as you inspect them more closely after defeating them, you find that they're not actually soldiers at all, and instead are the reanimated corpses of the men from all of the villages that you have seen so far. You are now able to piece together what is truly happening, as it appears the lord of this castle is trying to amass an army of corpses to eventually take over the entirety of the country. Armed with whatever equipment your party has, along with perhaps Dernwin, a legendary sword that you hopefully found amongst the dungeons of Spiral Castle, you are now able to finally make your way to the throne room where you will face off against none other than the absolutely horrifying Horned King. And this boss fight is incredibly dangerous, because not only is the Horned King incredibly skilled in sword fighting and magic, but he is also accompanied by a massive army of undead that you and your party will have to deal with while simultaneously fighting him. As the fierce battle continues, you and your party begin to be overwhelmed, not only by the strength of the Horn King, but the sheer numbers of his undead army. And as you scan across the large throne room that is currently the battlefield, you see that there is green smoke flowing out of a black cauldron right behind the Horn King's throne. And with a little bit of close observation, you and your party realize that this undead army is tethered to the black cauldron and its green smoke, and you assume that if you defeat the cauldron, you will be able to defeat the entirety of the army, making it all the easier to finally deal with the Horned King. Now, in the movie, in order to cause the Black Cauldron to be destroyed, a willing person has to be able to jump into it and sacrifice their life. I'm going to leave this up to every DM whether or not they want that to be the case, as it might require a player character to sacrifice themselves. At the same time, in order to avoid this, but also keep the same mechanical way of defeating the Black Cauldron, you can have your party discover an NPC who is seeking to defeat the Horn King somewhere in the dungeons of the Spiral Castle, who is more than willing to dive in headfirst in order to defeat this great evil. Or, you can simply have the Black Cauldron cauldron be a magical item that will take a certain amount of damage before finally breaking. Either way, once you and your party are successful in destroying the Black Cauldron, the undead army now ceases and turns back into nothing more than a pile of bones and flesh, and you are able to successfully defeat the Horned King way easier than it was before. For those of you that want a little bit more with your adventure, I'll be posting stat blocks on the Horned King, some of the minions that you might fight along the way, as well as loot that you'll hopefully find in Spiral Castle on my Patreon that you can find linked in my bio. And it means that you also get to join these amazing people. But with that being said, I hope you enjoy this adventure and until next time, keep questing.